know, I can barely remember my name some days. But um, for those, uh, for for it to be 20 years later, I can still tell you, uh, especially the first couple of days, almost everything that happened um, for those, you know, first couple of days. And so, um, yeah, it's it, I can't believe it's been 20 years. But our little section was called Camp Unity, and that's where you know, the people who were doing the recovery could come and get, you know, whatever it was they needed. If they needed a counselor, they could come. If they needed a pastor, they could come there. If they needed food or, um, you know, sometimes it was just simple as a pair of gloves. I don't think that there are any obstacles, uh, you know, for, for that time frame because at that time, you know, when the plane hit the Pentagon, everybody wanted to do something. Everybody wanted to help. Everybody wanted to, uh, to do something it didn't matter what it was so I don't remember that there were any obstacles I just remember that everybody came together uh, to work together and the in the the um, the area there that this they called it camp unity and that's kind of what I remember is that everybody just came together there was no no obstacles just everybody trying to do what they could to help out in a in a horrific situation so um, when the plane did hit the Pentagon, the Salvation Army was one of the first uh, the first agencies on site, and they were had a canteen, uh, l almost literally right away. They were there serving food, and then as time progressed, um, the Salvation Army offered. Um, you know, there were lots of Salvation Salvation Army personnel that came, so uh, food was offered. So was practical stuff like gloves and, you know, sometimes shoes, socks, because your feet got wet, you know, while you were working. Um, the Salvation Army offered um, pastors to pray with people, counselors to speak with people, and pretty much anything that you could kind of think of, the Salvation Army offered that to those people who were there. Uh, and, it, you know, from literally the first moment. Um, one of the one of the things that kind of sticks out in my mind is it's really a person. Uh, my friend Angie and I were there. We would work uh, often together as well, and but we met this uh, this canine officer, and his name was Isaac, and uh, he was uh, he was actually working the day that the uh, that the plane hit the Pentagon, and so he was one of the first people to uh, you know to go and offer help, and so. Uh, he kind of still sticks out in my in my brain and talking with him and uh, trying to sometimes make him laugh sometimes just listening sometimes offering food sometimes uh i don't know just being whatever we needed to be in that moment to uh, kind of help him uh, move through the day he's the one that kind of sticks out a lot because he was one of the first people that um that i encountered uh there at the pentagon so I was a Salvation Army officer at the time, and I was assigned to the uh, divisional headquarters in Washington, D.C., and our whole staff happened to be in Atlanta, Georgia at a conference when it happened, and thankfully I had taken my car, so we were able to get back, uh, back home to the D.C. area, and uh, once we got there, uh, and once we figured out what was needed and what we needed to do, uh, I would go over and work the evenings and the night shift with another um, DHQ officer. His name was uh, Major Otis Childs, and so um, we'd work the evenings and nights, and we would provide food and, uh, you know, conversation sometimes, just a listening ear, um, whatever whatever was needed at the time. Sometimes it was, uh, you know, handing somebody a pair of gloves or a pair of boots, whatever we had. So um, some of it was, you know, kind of... Uh, we try to make jokes and laugh. Uh, some of it was, you know, very serious, but um, we try to do what we could with what we had um, inside that little perimeter.